Hi, this is Jim from Execute English, and this is my first attempt at making a video to introduce Xiangxi. Uh, before we continue, uh, some basic introduction. Xiangxi is the the Han Yu Pinyin of the Chinese term. Uh, there are many other names where uh, it is it was used to be called. Uh, uh, perhaps more it is more well known as Chinese chess. Or elephant chess, or even ivory chess. Uh, elephant chess is a direct translation of the term in Chinese, whereas ivory chess is one of the older terms used to describe the game, uh, because it was believed that the ancients used ivory to make the pieces and even the board. Uh, Xiangqi is perhaps the most played board game in the world, although I have not been able to find any. Uh, statistics to support this claim. It is immensely popular in China and Southeast Asia, in countries like um, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, Vietnam, Thailand, etc. It is a game of strategy between two players, and they are divided into two colors, red and black. It is also a very important part of the cultural heritage of the Chinese. There are many, many um, idioms that are used in daily life that have their roots stemmed in Xiangqi. Uh, before we go on, I would like to take the opportunity to explain why Xiangqi is best used and why it is the official term and not Chinese chess. For example, uh, if Chinese chess were to be used, then the CXA or the Chinese Xiangqi Association would be called the Chinese Chinese Chess Association, which could cause some um, trouble or some misunderstanding, especially when international chess is implied. Uh, I went to search on Twitter recently, and uh, this is what I found. Uh, for example, in this tweet about Ju Wenjun, the current women's world chess champion, if Xiangqi was called Chinese chess, then she, uh, sometimes she, Ju Wenjun might be mistaken for having, for being the world's women's um, Xiangqi champion. Uh, this is another tweet that I found by Sino Chess, which is which I think is quite a good idea. Uh, for example, the 2019 Chinese chess championships would actually refer to the Chinese international chess championships. Okay. Uh, there are many, many other examples whereby using the term Chinese chess would cause some misunderstanding or some trouble in understanding what form of chess is being discussed. A simple history of Xiangqi. The modern day of Xiangqi that we play now, which has been in existence for all for almost a thousand years now or even more, uh, took form no later than the Song Dynasty. There are many theories about the origins of Xiangqi before the Song Dynasty, and uh, this has been complicated by different uh, hypotheses suggested by Western scholars and Chinese scholars. And um, uh, they will not be uh, discussed here. Uh, in this short video, I will instead focus on the Chinese side of the story. And there are many prehistoric origins regarding Xiangqi. For example, Shen Nong, the god of agriculture, invented Xiangqi. Uh, that it was, uh, it was a game model after the Chuhan contention, and one of the generals in the Chuhan contention, General Han Xin, uh, was is touted by many to be the inventor of Xiangqi. Uh, and there is also evidence of. Uh, literary evidence of uh, Emperor Wu of the Zhou Dynasty, who, who was called Yuan Yong, who lived during four, f uh, 543 to 578 AD, to be the inventor of Xiangqi. He even wrote a mantra called the Elephant Mantra, but um, unfortunately that piece of work is now not extant. Uh, Xiangqi has also be been believed to be a product of evolution, with um, its earliest form being Liu Po, and a game that existed during the time of the Warring States, about 2,000 over years ago. Uh, there are still many, many other uh, hypotheses regarding the history of Xiangqi, 
uh, which will not be covered here today. Uh, maybe I'll make a video to introduce the history of Xiangqi later. Uh, to begin with, we have to introduce the Xiangqi board. As can be seen, uh, there are nine vertical lines that make up the board. And these lines are called fouls. And there are ten horizontal lines uh, that can be seen, and they are called ranks. There is an empty space in the middle of the board, which is denoted as the river. And um, sometimes um, there are inscriptions in, in the river, Chinese inscriptions called Chu He Han Jie, which would mean the Chu River and the Han border. Uh, incidentally, in 2018, it was suggested that um, the Chu, Chu Han, the Chu He Han Jie be written on boards, especially for use in competition. There are two squares at both ends of the board, which are known as the palaces. Okay, and uh, by default, it it has been suggested that uh, red's side of the board be placed at the bottom, while black's side of the board be placed on top, such that the board would be in a vertical manner. There are diagonal lines in the palaces, which represent the movement uh, or where the advisors can move. And they are called the advisor diagonals or shi xing xian. And finally, there are um, several uh, inscriptions on particular intersections on the board, which are called board stars or pan xin. Uh, they represent the initial position of the cannons and pawns in the array. And Xiang Qi is a game, as mentioned before, of two opposing sides. And unlike international chess, the pieces are played on the intersections and and not in the squares. Okay, here you have you would have the initial array of the pieces on the board. And sometimes on certain Xiangqi boards, there are additional verses that are inscripted. For example, Guan Qi Bu Yu Zhen Jun Zi, which if were to be translated into English, would simply mean no kibitzing is encouraged or allowed. Uh, and there is another commonly used phrase, Qi Shou Bu Hui Da Zhang Fu, which means that no take back is allowed. Uh, we will slightly go into detail regarding the files, as this will be very important in the section on notation of Xiang Qi later on. In Xiangqi, the files are numbered from right to left in relation to the player. For example, as can be seen about here, red's um, first file and ninth file, as uh, not denoted by the stencils, are placed from right to left. Uh, and black's <coughs> files are numbered also in relation to black also from right to left there are different file there are different names for each of the files in chinese the first and ninth files being at the edge of the file uh, be on the edge of the board sorry are called the edge files the second and eighth files um, are called che xing xian or a term that is seldom used in chinese and uh, i have chosen to translate them as the external rib files the third and seventh files are called the elbow files or the xiang wei xian. The term elbow files was, I think, first appeared in a document uh, that was published by the Asian Xiangqi Federation about one or two decades ago. Uh, I think they used the the term elbow elbow files um, because they thought that the the uh, they used the anatomy of a human being as a reference. Um, but um, and an interesting thing to note be that in Tu Jingming's definitive Xiangqi dictionary, the second, third, seventh, and eighth files were, were all called the Che Yi Xian, and uh, Che Xing Xian, as I mentioned before, was only found in another book by Wang Guilong. Uh, <coughs> the fourth and sixth files are. Uh, need to be addressed specifically. 
They are called the rip files or le xian as a tr direct translation of the Chinese term le xian. Interestingly, in the same uh, article that was published by the Asian Shangxi Federation, the fourth and sixth files were initially called the unpaid files, which I personally feel that is very offensive and uh, will lead to many unnecessary trouble. Um, but why did the <coughs> why was it called the unpaid files in the first place? I think it was because of a basic kill that was called Yi Che Gua. Uh, although I have no evidence to prove it at the moment, but um, for in in all my you know my entire website and uh, in all my work that I've done, I've chosen to call the fourth and sixth files as the unpaid files. And God forbid them <laughs> being called the unpaid files. Okay. I've chosen to call them the uh, rip files. The fifth file is called the central file. And here is a short summary of the files, the English name of it. And finally, we will get to the ranks. Uh, the, as in the files, the, the ranks are named in relation to the player. Uh, for example, red's bottom rank will be the the horizontal line that's closest to the player, and the throat rank will come next. The cannon rank, the pawn rank, and the river bank rank. Uh, there is a, a there is a term in Chinese called qi he xian, uh, which would mean the cross river bank rank, uh, because it it is a specific term used to denote especially the chariot when being moved to the enemy's riverbank rank, where it is um, very, it would be a very threatening force, but also be susceptible to much attack. Uh, for more, uh, please support my website, and uh, uh, I've written and collected all this information and uh, and many other more information in understanding the elephant, uh, Shang Chi Primer Part Two. And, and of course, please feel free to use my free website. There are over 2,500 pages or 600 pages. I can't remember now. Uh, and I've been an ardent promoter of Shang-Chi for many years. And I really hope that the world would really, really love the game as I do. And uh, thank you.